Let's look in our Bibles at 1 Peter chapter 1, just the first stop in a journey this evening, talking about one of the more pressing issues in our lives right now, which is uh, watching um, the gradual unraveling. They're calling it the deleveraging of the financial systems. As you know, our whole financial system uh, the last decade has really mushroomed uh, over this, this, these default credit swaps. I don't even know all the vocabulary, but it was just this amazing amount of money that was uh, generated by uh, allowing the credit markets to just mushroom as they have. And we've heard more than enough about it, but it's very interesting to watch it all get deleveraged. You know, you leverage your money to, you know, put the least in and get the most bang for it. But when you start unbanging, it's painful. And that's what we're looking at. And, and what it's done is it's caused a, a general uh, gloom to come around because so much of our culture, America's culture, 70% of our economy is uh, consumer spending. Uh, that means a lot of what we do uh, is tied. Uh, you know, it's the old song, shows dates me, forget all your troubles, forget all your cares, and go downtown, you know, and shop. And it just, everybody, uh, it feels better to go buy something and go, go get something and run to the store and walk through the mall and, and, and shop. And it's a very good time for us as believers to, to realize that our source of joy is the Lord. It's not the economy. It's not our financial security. It's not our possessions. Uh, we do not measure our lives by what we have as far as possessions. In fact, our real net worth is what we would be worth if we lost everything. Think about that. Because uh, it's happening. Uh, for for many, many. All of us are paying a price, and some are paying huge prices. But this is what Peter says, and this is really our theme, and, and, and truly in my heart, if you kind of want to know what's behind preaching about prophecy, prophecy was intended to spur us to be possessing what Peter talks about in verse 3 of chapter 1 of First Peter, a living hope. You see, when, when the whole world is gloomy, when the whole world is struggling, 1 Peter 1.3 says we are the possessors of a living hope. Not just hope, it's hope that's alive and it springs up within us. And this is what he says in verse 3. Blessed be the God, of our, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. We were born again. Begotten again means born again. And we were born again for the purpose that we go through life surrounded by this living hope. And he continues by saying, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, that's how God accomplished it. Verse 4, this is what we're hopeful of. To an inheritance incorruptible. Now remember, everything in our fallen world is decaying. It's all you know, it's all falling apart. Everything just, it's just slowly wearing down. But we have an inheritance that is incorruptible. It's undefiled. It does not fade away because it's reserved in heaven for us. It's a wonderful thought to think about that, that the best is yet to come. We haven't passed our peak, passed our prime. We haven't. The good old days were good and they're old and they're past, but the best is yet to come. We have an inheritance. It's incorruptible. It's undefiled. It is not going to ever fade away. It's reserved in heaven for us. And verse 5 says, We are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if needs be, you have been grieved by various trials. And, and there's nothing wrong with saying that the trials are grievous. And, and the whole process of, of, of uh, going through anything in life that's hard, the loss of loved ones, the loss of, of, of finances, the loss of health, anything, it's, it's hard. The Christians aren't cold and heartless. We do grieve. But look what it says. Even uh, in this, we greatly rejoice, though for a little while, 
we've been grieved by various trials. So, so we are supposed to be rejoicing through the trials. And in verse 7, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. And though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. So the, the, the whole purpose of prophecy is to cause us to live in hope. And I hope that, that you will be spurred. In fact, I would encourage you, if you've never really done a prophetic study, this is a great year to do one. Uh, the latest word is that this whole thing isn't going to be over quick. Uh, it won't be settled by Inauguration Day or anytime soon thereafter. And that there is going to be this... Uh, this chugging through the the world, this financial, it's kind of like swallowing this big thing. You know how the snake swallows something bigger than them and it kind of, it takes a while to work it through. That's what's happening. The whole globe, in fact, did you read this week about Toyota? You know, they just have this river of tanker, or of uh, huge cargo ships that are delivering Toyotas and all these other cars into Los Angeles. And, you know, it takes months to stop this. It's just this train or it's just like a river of boats coming this way from Japan. And they said that no Toyota dealers have ordered Toyotas since late September. And they said that they're just offloading them off the boats and all the car carriers are parked there, all the, the trucks. And, and they're starting to buy or rent acres. They, in fact, Toyota just rented six more acres. They're going to park six acres of cars, you know, nose to nose, and they're going to think how they can stack them. And, and it's just, this whole thing is just starting, you know, to, to settle down over everybody. And, and it's so a good thing for us to do is to realize that the Lord wants us to live in hope. And our hope is not that we get it all back or that we get more or that we get lots. Our hope is in the Lord. And so prophecy gets us to look away from the circumstances where we live and look unto the author and the finisher of our salvation. And I would encourage you in this time, as, as things are happening, if you've never done a prophetic study, a lot of people have listened, but they've never personally studied. Remember I told you that 27% of the Bible is prophetic. And if you've never done a prophetic study... This verse, verse 3 of, of 1 Peter, this living hope verse, actually was a thesis of, of, and I told you this before, I spent 10 years of my life uh, working at Dallas Seminary writing a, a devotional, a living hope devotional through all the prophetic scriptures of the Bible. And it's actually a Genesis to Revelation study with Revelation right in the center. And if you have never done a study, I would encourage you. In fact, you want to get a Christmas present for someone? Buy them the devotional book. They sell them in the books or in the um, front office of the church. The Living Hope. It's a daily study through every prophetic passage in the Bible. And it's, there's a prayer attached and there's an action attached to actually learn biblical prophecy for yourself. And I don't have any charts. No charts in there. Because biblical prophecy is to point us to Christ. It's not to help us know which of the three are going to get ripped out and who's going to come up and which one's the beast. You know, we don't, you know, the Lord's totally in charge of all that stuff. What we're supposed to see is Christ more clearly every day and to be living in hope. So I'd encourage you, as you think about your devotional time for, for 2009, if the Lord tarries, if you haven't yet picked something, why not think of doing a, a prophetic study? And you know what it'll do? You go into work or into school and everybody's mourning, you know, over, you know, what are we going to do with this? They say we're in deflation now. You know, there's inflation. You know what deflation is? It's what you're seeing with gas. Only it's going to happen if, if Wall Street's right. It's going to happen to everything. Not just commodities, but wages are going to go down. And values of homes and, and everything. It's just they call it devaluation, where stuff goes down. And people are going to be mourning that. They're going to say, oh, man, you know, the, the work, they say they're going to lower our pay by 2%. What are you going to do about it? You say, I'm going to rejoice, rejoice greatly, because my inheritance is incorruptible and undefiled and not faded away. And they say, are you crazy? You say, that's the way you could put it, you know, but, but I'm trusting. I know the ending. And I know that no matter what happens to my body and my possessions, I have an inheritance in heaven. And so that's the purpose of prophecy.